Good afternoon, good morning, good night, good whatever it is, wherever you're at right now. Today we're going to be talking about something near and dear to my heart. And uh, he goes by the name Roger. I don't know why I named him Roger. I, and I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. And kind of when I looked at him one day, I was like, okay, this thing needs a name. I, I was like, why wouldn't why wouldn't I name it Roger? Because it he just looks like a Roger. Anyways, we'll be talking about my milk taxi named Roger today. There's a lot of reasons why we switched from a powdered milk replacer and bags to pasteurizing our own milk. One of them is definitely cost. Although a milk taxi might be kind of pricey, it's definitely paid off in the long run. Um, you might be paying. $50 for a bag of milk replacer when we were going through two or three of those bags a day. Uh, now we go through maybe one bag of milk replacer a month. So very rewarding in that way. Um, we're able to use all of our own milk and we're um, moving towards a more sustainable way to make our milk for our calves. So not only is this a uh, new milk taxi more uh, cost efficient it has definitely paid off with our calf health and i'll be talking about that a little later on obviously but one disclaimer this is not an ad there's some things i don't like on a milk taxi and there's some things that i do uh, maybe you will be able to change your mind about some of the things that you've been debating on feeding your um newborn so stay tuned and buckle up because we will be getting after it here. Something that I think is super, really super cool about our milk taxi is that our sickness and death rate for our babies here at the farm have decreased tremendously since we started using the milk taxi. I don't know if it's only the milk taxi is a factor but it has been unreal when we used a uh, powdered milk replacer we would have approximately 15 deaths a year and we've only had one in the last six months and i honestly think that was an internal organ cause related death nothing to do with sickness because she was like she was like two days old when she uh, passed away so Welcoming my buddy old pal, Roger the Milk Taxi. Uh, don't ask me, I mean, you can't tell me he does not look like a Roger. You, you can't. Can't think of a better name. I'm gonna give you a little uh, tour of him. And he is done pasteurizing. I don't know why I keep on calling him he is not a person. I'd also like to uh, point out here, I'm sorry about the sound quality, like the audio and if this isn't good quality picture in general, um, Evelyn said that I have to get 30,000 subscribers until I can get a new camera. You might be wondering, what is a milk taxi? Seriously, like I didn't know what it was until we got one. So the difference with the milk taxi is, uh, we used to have, we use this mixer right over here and we used to dump in like 60 pounds of uh, milk replacer, add it with water, mix it up, put your probiotics in there, mix that up you know and then we would just bring out this hose right here and we would feed them that way there was really no measurement on it at all it's kind of just a guessing game on each calf so there is our old setup it's still in here because we use it for water and the difference with uh powdered milk and milk replacer like i said before is we're actually using real cow's milk and pasteurizing it in this handy machine. It is on a timer, so say at noon, it starts pasteurizing for a couple hours, so when we get up here to feed cats, it's all ready to go. Pasteurizing is pretty much bringing it up to a really hot temperature, uh, and then it'll eventually cool it down. So it's a whole process, and I don't have to do any of it. It does it all automatically on a timer. Now, I can't really speak much to how pasteurization works and everything, um, all I know is it has to do with heating and cooling of the milk and it makes it so that any germs from the cows up there, they won't be transmitted into this milk down here. Because as we know, babies don't have good immune systems and 
they wouldn't be able to fight off any germs that were present in the milk. That we have, uh, I don't even know, it's a home in, home in Lao. I don't really know how to pronounce it. Uh, there's a couple different kinds that you can get. So this is just ours right here. It's got this cover on it. Um, that's kind of not rare to see, but you don't need the little blanket over that. It keeps the milk warm. You may have also noticed that it is plugged in right here. That is very essential for a lot of the things that this milk tax has to do. So you don't, you do need a power source for it, and you do need a water source for the taxi. See, this is hooked right up to the wall. Oh, <laughs> it's always running, almost like a hydraulic setup right here. Uh, all you have to do is take them out like this, and then the other hose right here is um, draining the water out after it's done. So they're not both going um, pulling water into it. The thing that we've learned in the milk taxi is that when you put um, powders in it, like uh, probiotic powders, they tend to not mix up very well. Um, sometimes it's like residue on the bottom after you empty it. So we switch to probiotic uh, in the liquid form. Another thing that we have found out about the milk taxi is that if you make the milk less aerated and you put some milk replacer in, to the taxi, we only use one small scoop. We put it into the milk and mix it up, and that typically it makes it so there's a lot less foam at the end, and it's a lot less dense. Uh, then you see a lot more foam than you would if you made it a little more uh, concentrated. One scoop. So this bag will honestly last us for weeks. I have to empty water, so while I do that, I'm going to, we like to give our milk at 104 degrees, so I'm gonna heat it up 204, like it says right there, and then I'm going to mix it up. Okay, time to empty out the water so that I can put the milk in their buckets. Okay, well, while I was dumping out water, I let this heat up for too long, and now it's at 107. Let's see at 104. I don't. That's one thing that I don't like. Is I guess I just don't really know enough about it. I don't know. It says that it's gonna stop at 104, but it doesn't. That's probably on me somehow. So now we are cooling it down. Another thing, this there is definitely a lot that you can do with this milk taxi. We kind of just scratched the surface because we got it in September, like August, September. So we haven't even ran it for a year yet, but I'm sure if you mess around with it, you can definitely learn a lot more. I can show you that in a second. For an example, like you can, these are just all the general things, but then if you go home and you put your password in, you can do all these things about protein levels, milk replacer levels. I don't know why there has to be a password. Just about at the right temperature, so I'm going to unplug it. There. And we can go out for a rip. Something really cool about this is that, that it pretty much dries by itself. So all you have to do is press this button right here and backwards and forwards. I think it's awesome. This right here is like a little plug that you can pull out and then if you don't push it back in, milk comes out. Next is our feeding system. So this is works definitely the best for us. No complaints. This kind of, this paper that I use for it, it used to be paper and then it all like rubbed off because this no taxi is waterproof. So you can spray down and everything and it's not a big deal. But I had a piece of paper on there. Didn't really hold up. The colors correspond to a number and I will show you that here. This girl here is a red and red is a four. When I say it's a four, all you have to do is go up here and move that up to the number four. Uh, this is another thing that you can set 
uh, in the on the home page here is you can pick how you want your numbers to go. So our newest babies get two liters. Uh, when they're about a week old, they're getting two and a half liters. Two weeks old to three weeks old, they're getting three liters. And then it just keeps on going up from there and it goes all the way to the number five, which is about a full bucket for four and a half liters. I've got a number four picked out here in the taxi and I'm just gonna press the button and uh, just giving her four liters of milk. I'm gonna go ahead and do this row right here. Uh, super easy, it doesn't take long at all. And all of every single pen in here has a clip on it. I switch, I go through and I see if I can upgrade any calves to a higher clip number um, every other day for the most part. So if I think that a calf can start getting a number four or can start getting a number five, then I'll just go through and I switch the clips. It's really not a big deal. I just realized that this thing has a little leak in it, which is usually because the inside of here gets a little um, dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that out. This is coming apart harder than I thought. Fun fact, I just broke one of these a couple months ago. And I mean, it's all plastic, so they're pretty, temperamental I guess of like other people have problems with that or not this isn't coming off let's get a better screwdriver here ow I'm sure it's not screwed on right so that's why it's not coming out this is the plug that I was talking about so if you pull it out and set it to the side it's like that and the milk will be able to just free flow out of there but if you pop it in like that then it won't come out I just go ahead and I do both sides at the same time so that I don't have to drive this down, stop, do that side, then come back and do the same thing. So I'm only really having to drive it down there one time. I know that one of the reasons why our cats do so well off of the milk taxi is because we now have consistency with how much we're feeding them each night. It's not more of a guessing game like it was before. The morning feeder is feeding uh, the same amount that I am, which is super important. She's not going to be getting two and a half quarts in the morning and three quarts at night. It'll screw her up. We usually treat about three calves a day in the winter when we are milk replacer. We've treated one calf this whole winter. to do some pail training and I'm gonna do that right now our average is like two a day so yeah this is a lot okay first in the ring we have 
often in hand between pellet trainings. It's very important. Do not want to be transmitting those germs. Next on our list, 6161. Um, she was born two nights ago, so she should be pretty well off. Sometimes they just need a little reminder on how it works, so. calf like this it means that she kind of knows what she's doing but she needs a little bit of help so if you can get them to go through the hole and oh come on this is kind of the end step for pail training getting them to actually be able to drink through the bucket holder a lot of them are a little skeptical about putting their head through This, folks, is why you need patience to work with calves. You might expect them to be really smart, but they're only a couple days old. They're little babies. Uh, they do learn to walk in their, like, their first five minutes of living, so you're gonna give them some credit for that. <laughs> but, yeah. No! No, no, get, of course. That thing just gets out too, what the heck? This is another method. Sometimes they don't like putting their head all the way down in the bucket. Hey baby. <laughs> that, um, you can tell she's a preemie because her um, fur is almost like it'd be a summer calf, but we're still in the winter months, so. Okay, you're coming with me, sorry. Let's go, bring it over. Come on. Let's go, back in your pen. You didn't even finish your milk. Come on. I'm going to walk away to get string, and I know she's gonna jump out, so. Awesome. One big knot. I literally never have a knife on me either, so. but it's honest work. Here's another girl. Pale training her quick. She looks pretty smart for a white calf. She's pretty young. I think she was born yesterday. So she's doing pretty good. She's making it on my nice list. How are you holding up over there? Good. Next up, I just washed my hands. So I'm going to the next calf. I'm telling you, there's a lot to be pale trained. This little girl was feeling under the weather this morning. She had a temperature of 102. Uh, she didn't drink this morning. She looks like she's still a little warm. So let's get her up. Easiest way to get a calf up is kind of like, we call it tasing, but literally it's just like when people tase you in real life. Um, or you can just rub their back right here and stimulate it like their mom would. That calf is not drinking and I know she won't. She's not hungry, but she didn't drink this morning. And that's problematic because she's not getting the nutrients she needs to start off her what? What the heck? Where'd she go? Right here. Right there? Yeah. So anyways, we're gonna tube it. Are you trying to like scoop me up for the pitch for? What are you attempting to do, human? Josephine! What? What are you attempting to do? Okay. Got a delivery of fresh milk, so I'm gonna fill up these bottles and put them in the fridge. Oh, 
our agenda. Biggest thing about the milk taxi, in my opinion, is making sure that it keeps sparkling clean. So first I'm gonna rinse out all the milk that's left over in here. Okay, no pressure. Then there's this little, um, I don't really know what you call that, a little strainer, and we have to get, are you kidding me? All this out. That goes back in there. Then we clean out the hose and you just drain out the hose like this until it all comes out. And now we're gonna fill it up until it gets by the sensor down there so that we can clean it. Now I'm putting on this little spigot on the end here and it pretty much helps clean out the inside of the taxi. The cleaning acid that we use and it kills a lot of the germs that's in there. Now it is cleaning. It has to warm up to 132 degrees before it gets cleaned. Then it'll be cleaning for eight minutes straight. To put these uh, milk taxis in perspective, I guess, I just looked it up, it's on Leadstone. Uh, the brand that we have for a 52 gallon one is 15,000. And this right here is a 75 gallon milk tank. They are pretty pricey, but they, I think, definitely benefit our calves more than Milk Replacer does and we have saved a lot of money in that department. And cleaning is done. So we can unplug it. And now we drain. This takes a while and it gets super steamy in here. I really get to get a good exfoliation on my skin. It is just about drained out. My least favorite part is upon us taking this puppy off. And this thing is super hot because it was just, oh my God, I do that every time. Oh, it literally is so hot. So this is a spigot that you have to take on and off or else the milk will splatter everywhere um, when it's pasteurizing. And I've learned that the hard way about three times, so. We're gonna give her one more good rinse. Pull this bucket out. Off we go. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Just started pouring rain. And downfall of the taxi is that I have to bring it up to the parlor every day to get it refilled. It's just a, a real shame. Join me on my rainy walk. It's thundering too, and I'm holding out a metal. Actually, it's got wheels on it, so doesn't that mean that I'm fine? I don't really know. This job is terrible in the winter, if you can imagine, when it's like really cold and then you can't make it up the hill because it's too icy. So then you have to carry all the buckets down one by one, or you can put them in the skid steer or your truck, but we do have plans to make an outdoor uh, cooling cooling tank down at the greenhouse. It might take a while, but we're gonna turn this sucker around so I can make it up the hill. There we go. And that way the guys that milk the cows up here will just bring down the milk and I won't even have to go anywhere. what they put the milk into 
and I'm gonna fill up 30 gallons because that is what the, the feeder needs in the morning. She's full of milk. Pretty much this will start pail training in the middle of the or this will start pasteurizing in the middle of the night and it'll be ready right when she walks in the door if everything goes well. We've absolutely loved it. I would give it a 9 out of 10 um, for uh, easy to use this. What does that mean? Like 9 out of 10 for accessibility, I don't know. And definitely a 10 out of 10 for our calf health improvement. I cannot, I just can't say enough good things about it, really. I wish that we could get like a cool color milk taxi, like a pink one or something, but other than that, no complaints. If you have any questions about Roger, uh, let me know. This bolt has to be plugged in and then I press the snowflake to cool it down so that I don't have warm milk sitting in my pasteurizer because that's pretty much the main reason how it curdles. Thank you very much. And I'm gonna go home and um, have some dinner because I'm absolutely starving. <laughs>